And I want to tell you today, because you've made a sacrifice while you are sitting here, your business is going to grow, finances are going to come in. Welcome to Hosting the Supernatural with Apostle Nikki van and your journey into the supernatural power of God. My name is Christy Pretorius, and I truly believe that today's program will touch your life. End time breakthrough prayer. End time breakthrough prayer. And uh, I want you to go in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse number 7. Somebody say Amen. Good. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse number 7. I'm going to read to you from the King James Version. Even them will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings, their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So the body of Christ needs to have a restoration of prayer. We need to have prayer back in the church, back in our homes, back in our personal lives. And that is why we're going to speak about this. The end time move of God is going to require prayer. It's going to require a move of the Holy Spirit like never before. And we have to get our prayer lives right. We have to get our churches right to be called churches of prayer. Now, our relationship with God depends on our prayer lives. And if our prayer life is restored, our relationship with God will be restored. I see a lot of fivefold ministers, and I'm, we're traveling all over the world. And I had the privilege just a couple of days ago with Pastor Shama. We preach in Ethiopia to 6,000 leaders. And you see the condition of the church, that prayer is really something. It's just a sideline thing. Just, okay, we have a prayer session. And the relationship among men and women of God, that's why we see so much sin in the house of God. We see so much men of God falling away or just getting away with things because our prayer lives is not intact. So I want to speak to you about end time prayer. And the lack of prayer is the greatest deficit in the church today. And therefore the church don't have power. We don't have power because we don't have prayer. We don't see creative miracles because there's no prayer. We don't see atmospheres shaken because there's no prayer placed into the atmosphere. That's why it's, you know, it's, it's easy to preach in a church like this. It's easy to preach at DCC. It's easy to preach at your church probably. And, and here's the thing. Why? Because prayer is being placed in the atmosphere. But believe me, this is a handful of, of, of churches that you can feel when you walk in, it's easy. There's an atmosphere. The presence is there. The musos know what to do to create an atmosphere. Prayer has been placed into the atmosphere. But they are, the church in majority, we lack this atmosphere. We lack this prayer. We lack this authority that we need in the kingdom of God. And uh, if, if we're not getting our prayer lives right in the church or the church back into the house of prayer, we will become a house of man. If we don't have power, we won't have, or if we don't have power, the Holy Spirit can't manifest. We need to have an encounter with power, an encounter with prayer. So, there are demons that have been released in this end time move of God from the second heaven. Demons that have not been manifested before. It's been kept for a time as this. And therefore you will see some of your prayers are struggling to break through. Some of your breakthroughs are, are, are withholding. Some of the things you believe in God was just not coming through because there are now new spirits. We Not new spirits, but there are stronger spirits in this end time that we have to come against. Let me give you an example. In the 80s and 90s, we used to pray that people will get healed of cancer. And they did. Today, here's what's happening. Fivefold ministers are full of cancer. And if you have cancer, I'm not judging. I'm just listen to what I'm saying. 20, 30 years ago, people were praying, seeking God. And we had territory that we won against cancer. Now we've lost that territory. We've lost that territory through prayer. The church of Jesus Christ have become a, a seeker sensitive church. It's all about programs, all about stuff. And the power of prayer have been lost. And we've lost that territory of miracles. And now the same demons we used to cast out is now upon us. 
same spirit we used to preach against is now manifesting in the church. And so I'm speaking to you from that, from a heart of love to you, for you to understand that we have to get back the prayer in our churches. 24-hour prayers, teams of prayers, we must pray. And I'm telling you, I've gone through this process where I felt like, I don't know if I should pray. You know, everything is running well. Church is growing. You know, things are moving. So, you know, all is good. I don't have to pray that much. I know it's a shock for you, but let me just tell you, I had to get to the rude awakening that, that I, if I'm not right and if I'm not praying, my church is not praying. 15 minutes before I get on the platform is no longer enough. You know, you get 15 minutes of intense prayer, and then I get on the platform and preach, and, and, and you see just 15 minutes of miracles and 15 minutes of breakthroughs. And then I had to push this thing to an hour, and two hours of prayer. And I'm not saying go into works. I'm saying prayer is based upon the relationship you have with the living God. So I'm going to help you to, to, to not pray from the place of need, but from the place of relationship. That's the purpose of this message. Now, in verse number 7 of Isaiah chapter 56, I want you to see the original intent of God. It says here, um, Even them will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Say house of prayer. That's the original intent of God. He didn't say house of worship. He said it's a house of prayer so God's mind God's original intent about his church is called the house of prayer now, I'm not saying you must call your church house of prayer I'm just asking you that we don't walk into that dimension we think oh this is a house of worship it's a house for families and we are a family church and well I understand all those things but inside is it a house of prayer or is it just now we have some prayer cells. I know we have five intercessors. We have something like that. You know, we pray sometimes. No, no, no. And prayer is the least attended thing in the church. Is that, is that happening in your places as well? Or only the women come and pray and, and the men are not praying and just a couple of people pray. Because we, do, because we have put prayer um, as just one of those things, we've lost the power of God. We're not reaching our cities. We're not getting our people in. We don't pray the harvest in. And that's why it's so important to hear the first session. Because when we pray, the harvest will come. But you need to accommodate this harvest. If I'm a good shepherd of one sheep, God will give me two. And if I am a good shepherd of two, he'll give me five. And so God will multiply. But my structures, my systems, my services, everything must be in line. But I'm telling you, in the spirit, we need to pull in the harvest. There is a dimension now. And I love what, what Apostle Maldonado said this. He says, God showed him in a vision that the shekel, the, the, the harvest is ready. And he, he said, Jesus said to him, go and take the shekel and put it into the harvest field of business, of, of finances, of families, of nations, and pull it in. As so I want to tell you today, here in the name of Jesus, the harvest is ready. Your finances are ready. Your miracles are ready. The thousands are ready. People are ready. You get a better put in that shekel and start pulling it in, pulling it in, pulling it in, pulling it in. And I'm going to place a demand upon you today to start pulling in the harvest. We're going to get souls from this Sunday. It's going to start increasing in our churches how many of you can believe with me today come on let's believe God for for double what we had all the time and say God if you had 50 souls saved on a Sunday this Sunday we believe in God for a hundred and we pull it in someone come on somebody pull it in so we pull in this harvest I declare that your finances are about to change some of you need buildings how many of you need buildings here Pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. You need to pull those buildings in by prayer. By prayer, we're pulling this harvest in. Things are not happening just because we're there. It's some prayer that has been activated in the spiritual realm. So let me show you what God's intent is about His church. And there are five things in verse number 7 that God is thinking about. And I'm just laying the foundation. Number one, He says there must be burnt offerings. In my house of prayer, there must be burnt offerings. This offerings speaks about your tithes, speaks about what you need to bring to God. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1 speaks about that. It speaks about the tithes we must bring to God. Our offerings, sacrifices in your church, 
Uh, and uh, and I'm, I believe you are not one of those seeker sensitive churches. But let me just help you. Don't tell your people when you walk out, just there's a little dustbin at the back. Just put your offerings in there. You have to teach your people. You must take time to teach your people. Hello? Take 10 minutes of your service and teach them about tithes and offerings. Because the word brings faith. The word brings life. It's the word that prospers. Not you that prosper. It's the word that prospers them. And if we teach them the word and they start receiving the word, they will go and start giving. Burnt offerings in the house of prayer is not a sideline thing. As you walk out, put something in. You must give an opportunity. Teach your people. Let them react to the word by giving and you'll see the testimony start coming into your ministry about financial release amen so god says here in my house of prayer i want burned offerings then the second thing he says i want sacrifices say sacrifices in first peter chapter 2 in verse number 5 if you want to go there quickly it speaks about <clears throat> the sacrifices in first peter chapter 2 I didn't give it to them. They just put it up for me quickly. Verse number five. <clears throat> about the sacrifices. You also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house. A holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. What are these sacrifices that we are looking at? Sacrifices means this. To draw near to God. In a house of prayer, there must be the sacrifice of worship. There must be the sacrifice of your time. There must be the sacrifice of your energy. Sacrifice of giving up your house for cells. Uh, sacrifice of fasting. Come on. Sacrifice. A sacrifice of all these things. Every time I sacrifice... I draw near to God. Every time I take a fast, I draw near to God. Every time I give, I draw near to God. Every time I don't feel like worship and I worship Him, I draw near to God. I bring a sacrifice. You are here for, for two days, 48 hours in your busy schedule, running churches, coming together to say, I'm going to put a sacrifice in there. Some of you, like Port Elizabeth, they flew down here. Cape Town flew down here. People drove all the way from all over South Africa to be here. That's a sacrifice. And I want to tell you today, because you've made a sacrifice... While you are sitting here, your business is going to grow. Finances are going to come in. Contracts are going to be given to you. Members are coming to your church. I'm telling you as a man of God, that's going to happen. Why? Because I give a sacrifice and I draw near to God. And He will make sure that those things start happening. Every conference, businessmen will sit here and they have to take two days off their work or give their business over to assistance. While they sit here, I promise you, they come with testimonies. They show me emails of contracts coming through, debts being paid. Because why? They're sitting here. But while they're here, God is working because He sees sacrifice. Now that word sacrifice, you don't hear about that in the secret sense of the church. Nobody wants to die there. It's all about motivations, all about you can become better and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying we have to come to a place of sacrifice. When last did we just sacrifice time, fasting, put away the sweet stuff, put away the, the junk food and all those things and just said, God, I am sacrificing my time, my energy for the things of God. And the third thing about this house of prayer, it says that there's an altar in verse number seven. It says we need to have a place of altar. That's the place where God meets his people. He says there, put the sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. In verse number seven. So I want you to see this. The altar can never be replaced. Altars are broken down. Altars of prayer. Altars of giving, altars of sacrifice, altars of fatherhood, altars of sonship. Those altars have been broken down. And we have to come back to the place where we're going to rebuild the altar. Now, I just want to use one practical example. This is an altar here. Alto, altar here. Here people meet God. Here we pray. Somebody got healed a couple of minutes ago at the altar. Don't neglect the altar. 
Don't back your chairs to here that you can't even move. You need to have a space where you can just, just let the altar of God just be the altar of God. There must be that place that people can just meet God. Now, please, I'm not judging this morning if you have chairs up to here. But make some room, man. Make some altar space, you know, for God and for souls. Now, we don't do that. We don't ask people to come to the front. But, you know, I think I'm just going to call them back to the altar again. Sometimes we just have to meet God at the altar again. Amen. Why? Listen, God wants to meet us there. Is there a place in your home that you can meet God? What is, where's the altar in your home? It's the altar in your business. Where's the altar in your church? The place that you can meet God. And God says, I want this altar to be restored. And number four is this. He says, it shall be called a house of prayer. House of prayer. Not a social club. Not a gathering. Not where everybody just chill out. It's a house of prayer. Say house of prayer. Listen, family, if we don't have a house of prayer, it's going to become the house of man. And we're going to accommodate man instead of God's presence. And the first thing, and this is where I'm going to pick up with Pastor, Pastor Peter. He says, it's a house for all people. All people. It must be a multiracial church. And I'm going to make a very powerful statement. Whether you like it or not, if your house, your church is not multiracial, then I wonder if it's a church. If there is, listen, if you have racism in your church, this is only a white church. It's only a black church. It's only a color church. It's only a Zulu church. It's only a Kosa church. We have a bit of a problem here. It's only Afrikaans speaking church. We need to get away from this... Uh, black and white and cultural and traditional stuff and we need to come and say God says my house is a house of prayer it's a house for all nations hello we need to break this thing why are we not getting a breakthrough why are we not getting miracles because the spirit of the age has come and the spirit of the age manifests in two ways it number one it wants instant gratification Instant. I pray now, it must get it now. I sow now. God, I sowed last night. You better show up today. God is not a gambler. He's God. He doesn't play that game. And so we have to understand how God works. We cannot live. Yes, everything is instant. Everything happens quickly. But sometimes God allows you to marinate a little bit. Number two. The spirit of the age hates sacrifice. Don't ask me too much. And prayer is one of those things as priests we have to do. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to pray. When the priesthood is removed from the church, there will be no more presence. And the presence comes where there is sacrifice of praise, of worship, of giving. Of prayer. In Luke chapter 18, verse number 1, I'll give you a couple of verses today. <clears throat> it says here, and he spoke a parable unto them and to this end that men ought always, always, not sometimes, always to pray and not to faint. Well, Welcome back again to Hosting the Supernatural. You are watching a very powerful series on how to appropriate the supernatural power of God in your life. This is what this program is all about, Hosting the Supernatural. Now we've been speaking about how do I appropriate the power of God? How do I come into that place where I can access the supernatural power of God? Now the first key is relationship. You have to have a relationship with God. A relationship that, that you desire more of Him, that you want to be close to Him, that you want to feel Him, you want to experience God on a daily basis. Now principle number two is the principle of prayer. Prayer. Prayer shouldn't be need-based. You know, we just pray because I need a miracle, I need a contract, I need a promotion, I need, I need, I need. The church has become very need-based, orientated. We just want 
our needs to be met. Have you seen that uh, if there is a miracle crusade or there's a prophetic conference going on or something where my need can be met, I want a miracle, I want a word, that that's the biggest attendances. So we've become so need orientated as Christians and we need to change that by prayer. Prayer is the place of relationship. Prayer was designed to have relationship with God. Jesus, the closest He was to His Father in heaven while on this earth, was through prayer. That's the way He had communication with His Father while He was on this earth. Prayer. So prayer wasn't based upon needs. Prayer was based upon relationship. In prayer, we have to understand that's where we generate power. Show me your prayer life. I'll show you the power that will demonstrate in your ministry. If, the, if nothing is happening, then we should ask ourselves the question, how is our prayer lives? Prayer is the key to the miraculous. Prayer is the key to the supernatural. Don't be fooled by hyper-grace messages that says, I don't have to pray that much. Jesus paid it all. You know, He knows everything. He's going to heal the people if He wants to. No, you have to appropriate the power of God. You have to access the power of God. And you access it through prayer. Number one, relationships. Number two, prayer. Access the power of God through prayer. Prayer is the place where you generate the power of God. Of all the things the disciples saw about Jesus, multiplying the, 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 the bread and the fish, walking on the water, uh, raising Lazarus from the dead, opening the eyes of the blind, all those things. Of all those things, they never asked Jesus, teach me how to do a miracle. Teach me how to walk on water. Teach me how to multiply the bread. They said this to him. Jesus, teach us how to pray. Because prayer is the key. Now, in the end time, if you want to move in the power of God, you need to go to this place where you watch and pray. You need to watch and pray. It doesn't say pray and watch. It says watch and pray. So the question is this. What are you watching? What are you seeing when you pray? Now, if you are watching while you pray, guess what's going to happen? Your prayer language is going to change. The dimension is going to change. The authority is going to change. When I get to, to our church or to any place that I preach, I am prayed in when I get on that platform. In other words, I've already seen what God is going to do. He already showed me what's going to happen. So I've watched and then I pray for that. So you will say, for instance, I'm going to heal people today of, of back problems or the blind eyes are going to open or the deaf ears are going to hear. Guess what happens? I've already watched that. I've already seen that. And because I see that, my prayer life changed. So then I start praying and I say, God, that blind person is going to be in that service today. I thank you already that you opened the eyes of the blind. I thank you that you already opened the deaf ears, that you already raised that person from the wheelchair. Why? Because you see, you've watched what you pray for. Jesus, when he did miracles on this earth, what did he do? He went to his father and he spent time with his father. He had relationship with his father. He would come down out of prayer. And then he will tell his disciples, let's go to Jerusalem. It wasn't even on their schedule. As they walked to Jerusalem, people were getting healed. And, and here is the key. He said, I just do the will of my father. I just do what my father did this morning in prayer. So what is the basis of this? Jesus went in prayer with his father, relationship, number one. Number two, in prayer. And he watched what his father was doing. He came out of his prayer closet, walked in the streets of Jerusalem, and did exactly the manifestation of what he was watching in his time of prayer. So I want to encourage you. You need to change your prayer life from being need-based to being relationship and watch what you pray. Believe God for that contract. Believe God for that miracle. Believe God for the impossible to become possible. Once you start seeing those things, your prayer life will change and miracles are going to happen in your life. So I want to bless you in the name of Jesus that there will come a spirit of prayer and of intercession upon your life in the name of Jesus that you'll start watching, being discernful, just understand how the spiritual world works. And what you see, you pray. What you see, you declare. What you see, you believe. 
Those are the things, the practical things on hosting the supernatural. So I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ to move in the power of relationship with your heavenly Father. Well, until tomorrow, God bless you. What a truly remarkable message that was. It is our mission to activate you in the supernatural power of God. Maybe you're watching us today and you say, this message really touched my life. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. It is the best decision that you can ever make and it will be an honor for me to lead you in a prayer. Just say this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. As from today, I'm a child of God. Heaven is my home and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've said that prayer, why don't you please get in contact with us? We would really like to follow up with you. Like I said, our mission is to activate this generation in the supernatural power of God. Why don't you partner with hosting the supernatural and help us take this message across the globe? When you partner with hosting the supernatural, you will be a part of impacting thousands of people's lives through salvation, healing, and deliverance. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. For we walk by what? And not by? Say it again. For we walk by faith and not by sight.